Go. All right. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee meeting. Everybody is welcome to attend and participate, so long as you abide by our code of conduct and the antitrust policy. Uh, and the former, the uh, code of conduct, uh, helps ensure that everybody's contributions are uh, discussed respectfully. And with that, we can jump into announcements. Uh, against my better judgment, uh, I uh, did some tinkering with the proposed uh, maintainer summit. The uh, first date and location that we put out, I got a lot of feedback from maintainers that they could not meet that. And by moving it one week later and shifting the city a little bit to the east, uh, we pick up uh, several maintainers. So uh, that's the most optimization that we can do for, for this first installment of the maintainer summit. And we'll use this as sort of an experiment uh, to figure out what works well and, and uh, maybe what could be adjusted for uh, future events that, that target uh, the, some background better people can mute. Um, uh, anyway, for, for events that, that target more of the development concentration for. I would just um, point out because we are going to be considering a project that may be relevant here, but DevCon is the same time. Yep, yep. There is a, a normal constraint satisfaction problems. There's. A, yep. No, I I get it. I'm just just mentioning that. Yeah, yeah. That that is a downside, but uh, you know, looking looking at the the projects that were part of the portfolio at that time, it it was a reasonable trade off. Um, I know that we'll also split uh, staff as well, so we'll have to work through that. But I think with it being a, a smaller event, uh, we'll hopefully have uh, less of a burden there as well. Vipin asked a question in the chat, which is, is this a contributors or a maintainer summit? Yeah, so the, the words are... Uh, I don't know what a great word for this is, but we're going to start with with this focus on maintainers and see where we go from there. The space that we were able to get uh, will comfortably support about 40 people. The maintainers list has about 50 people on it, assuming we get something less than um, full participation that'll put us right around that comfortable limit for the space. Um, and uh, so, you know, like I said, this this will be an experiment. This is the first time we're doing this, and, and we'll see how we can adjust from there. Uh, next on the announcement list, it looks like the following week, if you didn't get a chance to enjoy cool weather in Minneapolis, you can take a trip to Moscow. I don't know if anybody is on. Uh, is Selena here? Um, yes, so uh, we have a bunch of different stuff up on the wiki for um, the boot camp Russia. We're co-planning it with the team in Russia. Um, and so one thing that I would you know, suggest people go and check out is the new checklist under planning docs, where we're getting closer and closer to the boot camp in a box policies that um, I wanted to create it at the very beginning. So we're getting it where each of those different groups can then uh, start planning things like badging, branding, catering, equipment, event location, on-site checkup, sponsorships. Um, and then next week, we're going to be doing the same sort of thing with marketing. So we're taking the boot camps closer and closer to making it where they can be a little bit more standalone. So I highly suggest that um, people go and check that out to sit there and see how it's, it's all getting organized. Okay. So, any questions from anyone on that, by the way? <clears throat> so, Lona, so where is this? Uh, because there's nothing at the top level that would suggest that there's something going on there. Um, what do you mean there's nothing at the top level? I'm looking at the Hyperledger wiki page, and I don't see anything about planning for boot camps and other things. It's all under events. There's events, and there's boot camps, and there's boot camp Russia. Um, what I've done previously is when it's getting closer to the thing, I'll um, 
put uh, a little message thing on the top, but um, I don't have any, none of the different things go to the top of the um, wiki page. I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Okay. Uh, I don't hear. Uh, okay, so I'll tell you what I'm saying. I'm saying that basically, there's an awful lot of stuff going on on the wiki that's completely invisible to anybody that's not camped out on every wiki page. Is my point. We need to do a little bit better job, I think, of getting even the TSC because I was not aware that there was anything going on there. And we need to do a better job of raising awareness of things that we're doing here to try and do planning for whatever. Um, that's all I'm asking is that we think about, I mean, maybe emails or I don't know what, but there's an awful lot of stuff that goes on on the wiki. And if you're not actually subscribed to every wiki change, you're not going to hear about it. The date was finalized last week. And uh, that's not my point. Okay, I wonder if there's maybe some frustration about the boot camps in general. Is that part of the concern, Chris? Um, I, I, I think it's just a question of visibility. Yep. Yeah, are we are we advertising what we're doing? Is the structure of the is the structure of the wiki and website advertising what we're doing well? Are we are we getting I mean, there's a lot of interesting stuff. Um, it's kind of hard, for example, to find some of the results of the, um, like the project lifecycle. All of this stuff, I think the open, the open question that Chris is asking is, is there a way that we can publish more visibly the really interesting stuff that we're doing coming up? Yeah, I mean, one thing I know even Confluence has is like a, I, I've seen it enabled on other wikis is like a change log. I don't know if that would be, uh, useful here, or maybe it'd be too cluttered, but maybe that would at least somewhat help address it if you could look back over the past week and and uh, see what's changed. That may already be enabled for all I know. Well, it's already it's enabled. All that stuff's enabled. I mean, um, on the wiki, there's ways to subscribe to changes to all pages, changes to specific spaces. Um, yeah, I, <clears throat> is this just not knowing how the wiki tools work? It, it's it's a question of you switch when you switch to confluence you switch from a push model to a pull model so we have to go pull the information we want now i mean even like you know the tsc agenda used to be sent out and mailed beforehand and it's not always there and unless you're subscribed to the page right yeah and so you have to go through and subscribe to pages but then you have yep. to know there's a new page to go subscribe to no 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 you can subscribe to a whole space at a time um, right. and or, you get or with the I mean, I get about 100 emails from Confluence a day. <laughs> you can dial up or down kind of your notification preferences. Um, I, I don't think it's wiki notifications that are going to solve Chris's concern. Um, it's, it's, you know, do we need other, other bandwidth channels? I mean, we come to the TSC calls with the stuff that we really want the developer community to know about. Um, we also do put things in the monthly newsletter, but maybe there's other frequency kinds of updates that are needed to reach the constituency beyond the TSC. I mean, we kind of uh, do tell people the TSC mailing list is where you want to come to if you want kind of the, the best bandwidth feed on the stuff going on community wide. Um, are there other, is there a desire for other types of notification channels? Yeah, I feel like it's it, there's always so many notifications and ways to get notifications. I'm looking more for filtering than than more volume. So, it, what I wonder behind this comment though is is we had we've had discussions off and on all year about the kind of events that we're doing and the kind of events that we're supporting, uh, and I don't think we maybe we didn't get to a satisfactory conclusion of that to the point that, that everyone feels like they were on board with or aware of the, the full set of events. 
So I think this event did come up in discussion, uh, I don't know, two to four weeks ago, something like that. Uh, no, actually, maybe more than that, because uh, it came up when we were first talking about uh, this maintainers or contributor summit. But that was verbal in, in one of these meetings. I'm pretty sure this boot camp has been on the agenda of you know TSC made calls each week for the last month or two. I mean, like this is new. We're out of you know with with a, with a very active solicitation for if you're interested, get involved. All right. Okay. All right. Well, not, why don't we do this then? Um, you know, consider what what you really want to communicate uh, offline and then let's get an agenda topic together around it, whether it's uh, communication of events or wiki or, or what have you. And we'll have uh, a clearer discussion next week. So previously, the reason I had the agenda as always being on the same page and having it just be updated every time instead of creating new ones every time was to actually cut down on those notifications so you could just subscribe to it but then you asked me to create the new ones. And so I was like, okay, so I created the new forms and then we started creating the new ones in May. But that's originally why I just had one um, was for that reason is to make that agenda subscription easier. Um, for a lot of this, it's basically a decision in regards to how do you want that to lay out, right? It's like, if you don't, if you dislike the fact that it's, cluttered and you have to go back and look through the versioning then you have to get the notifications <laughs> it's just kind of like uh one way or the other of organizing the information um okay so when that was changed it wasn't like it was a big deal to me it was just kind of like okay sure we'll change it but now you'll have to deal with notifications um while the other one you don't have to deal with notifications so it's kind of like one half dozen of the other all right. Yeah. So uh, again, people, if if you've got some thoughts about communication or whatever it is, let's get those structured for a structured discussion next week uh, or a week thereafter. Uh, the, the the next thing we've got on the agenda today that hopefully people have been thinking about is uh, we need to get a little bit more active in the steering that we do with TSC, and we know that we've got a lot of um, uh, upcoming project proposals. Some of those will be discussed next week. Uh, some of those have already been, uh, we've been able to disposition those offline. But there's the, the constant question that we have of how many flowers do we want to cultivate in the garden and, and what sort of guidelines do we want to set around up front so that it's clear when we, when we plant and when we weed uh, to keep beating a metaphor to death. So I'd like to have some of that discussion right now, and then we've got some more guidelines in mind so that we don't need to rehash those when we have individual proposals to go through. Uh, so with that, I wanna open the floor to uh, TSC members to start uh, discussing where those guardrails should be. Well, I, I think as, as a group, we need to decide if we wanna figure out what convergence means and, and head towards that. Um, you know, I think we've been doing some of that with Transact and, and things like that, but, um, you know, we have all these DLTs written in all different languages, so it's tough to take the best of each and, and you know, come up with something better from, you know, I, I think in this case, the sum of the parts is, is um, not greater than the whole, it's less than the whole. Um, and so, you know, if we could go back four years and re-architect how we did things, would we do it differently and what would that look like? But the charter sort of calls out for ADLT, not 26. Other people? Am I crazy? Yes. <laughs> All right, but in this, in this particular case, am I crazy? Yeah. Um, and Okay, and number one, I, um, we act like DLT is a technology and it solves a whole bunch of different problems. And anytime we start coming in and saying, uh, we want the same technology that works for a semi-centralized um, 
uh, consortium based thing to be the same thing that we use for a more broadly decentralized um, uh, set of, of um, providers, vendors, supporters for it. Um, the, the technologies are not the same. You can't optimize for one and expect, the, uh, expect it to simply pick up and drop down on the other one. The optimization points are very different. So um, having one technology is it's like saying, let's pick the one database that we're all going to use. It, it makes no sense. So, so I think starting from the one DLT side of things is, is not helpful. I think starting from what are the problems we're trying to solve and do we have gaps that cover it? Um, and saying, hey, what we really need is one technology that provides, well, just to you know, pick up on the Gardner one, we need one technology that provides oracles. We need one technology that focuses on providing cryptographic solutions. We need one technology that focuses on contract execution. We need one platform that's targeted at, at centralization, and we need one platform that's targeted at decentralization. I'm fine with that. But I think as a TSC, our job becomes identifying what the gaps are and figuring out whether or not we have technologies that are overlapping excessively or whether they fill gaps. Yeah, so, so Mick, this is Chris. So I think I agree with that, but then you also need to have a certain amount of coherence with respect to things like, okay, so what programming language are we going to be focusing on primarily? Because right now we have a melange of every programming language under the sun and absolutely no architectural coherence amongst the different pieces parts, right? We have Rust, we have Go, we have Python, we have um, uh, Java, we have uh, C++. C++ and so how, how do you take, I mean, a piece of function from one that may be, you know, distinct and unique and valuable potentially across them and integrate it when to do so you have to jump through all kinds of ridiculous hoops like doing JNI, you know, binding, which God only knows, you know, how secure that really is in the context of something like blockchain uh, in order to accomplish it. Right. Uh, when you have to recompile well, and relink everything. Yeah, but this is, I mean, we've been, we've been doing, well, no, 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 but we've been doing APIs for a long time. So uh, I, the, the, I think what, what I hear you saying, Chris, is it's not about the language. It's about how do we connect the parts together? Yeah. And, and if we need to do it by unifying language, okay, that's fine. Um, I think we can well, do it by doing a better the, job with APIs. Well, but, but Mick, I'm actually also focusing on not just, I mean, on the architectural aspect of things, but also, on just the community aspect of things. I mean, if you take a look at communities that are successful, they tend to have a certain amount of architectural coherence in terms of, for instance, what language are they primarily focused on? Now, yes, there will be SDKs and all kinds of different flavors, but primarily when you're building, you know, the underlying technology, there's a consistency of language because that then tends to attract also a community that has similar skill set. Uh, hey, Chris, I would point you at CNCF. Yeah. Um, they, they have, they do not have language consistency. They strive for microarchitecture where they're behind um, well-defined um, APIs that are callable, either RESTful or some other RPC mechanism. That's how they drive interop. I, I, I think having to pick one language to rule them all is... I don't know. I don't want to die on that hill. Well, well yeah. um, so, um, I've seen Hart's hand up for a while. Why don't Why don't we do this? Uh, pe some people are trying to raise their hand, and, and other people are jumping in. Let's uh, just try to keep an eye on whose hand is up, and let's let's try to pass the conch shell around, if you will. So, Hart. Sure. Um, I I think I agree with Mick in general. Um, you know. We want to drive, we, we want to push towards convergence, but I don't know how we can force it. Um, and a lot of our efforts at convergence have not been doing so well recently. I mean, if we look at things that we created to, to drive convergence, like working groups and other things, uh, you know, those aren't doing great. So, uh, so I guess I'm not sure what we can do to, to kind of uh, push things to integrate more. Um, other than sort of try to encourage people to build more component-wise projects. Um, I think it's a difficult problem. And that being said, uh, you know, 
in the context of, of projects and project proposals within Hyperledger, um, if we choose not to include a project, it's not going to go away. I, I commented on this before. Um, so anyway. Okay, Jonathan. Probably in a similar context, actually. I think, I don't know, I don't want to sound, I think that most of these discussions are actually not just technical. Like we need to make sure, or we need to try to find some business model behind such convergence. Like I don't see why two projects suddenly start collaborating or create an interoperability layer if there's no value in doing that, right? And what happened before we were talking three years ago, we were talking about like probably one framework with a lot of extensions. Now we have a lot of frameworks and not everything is complete. So like, like Hart said, we are not successful in, in making a coherent story and I don't think that everything works. So if I look at the layered approach, like look at the EA, right? At least it's a bit more consistent in terms of, yeah, there's some wallets, you know what's the front end, you know what's the back end, you know what's an explorer, et cetera, et cetera. Every time that we add another what framework. Approach? A second, sorry? I, I couldn't quite hear you. You said that what approach was working? No, I, I didn't say anything. No, I just said like, if you look at the EA uh, version of the stack, so it's very clear basically what you need to do in every kind of layer of the stack. I, I can share a link if you want. But, but that's because they have kind of one layer, one solution. You know, we have many DLTs and we sometimes, I don't know if we forget or we just think that somebody else will do it. We need to add all the other features to be consistent and coherent, right? So if I have an identity, if I have DIDs, uh, it would be nice to have the DIDs working with most of the DLTs that we have and most of the frameworks that we have. Like just to create a DID on Fabric is very different than doing it on Sotos, it's very different than doing it on Uroha, et cetera, et cetera. So every time we add another framework, we need to think about what do we do with the rest of the tooling? What do we do with the rest of the stack that, and will it converge? And I just don't see how we can drive that. that, that basically to answer to, to what Hardy is saying, why we're not successful at being, being very convergent across different stacks. I think we don't always have the business model behind to drive the convergence. That, that, that's what it seems to me. So EA is a spec and it's not a, a code base. So I, I appreciate the allegory, but it maybe doesn't. No, no, no. I'm not, yeah, what I'm saying that that architecture, that spec, is, is at least consistent because you have one layer one. So it's a lot easier for us to build, <coughs> let, let's say, different wallets that work with the same layer one solution. I'm not comparing the fabric to the EA spec. I'm talking about the different frameworks that we have as one framework with multiple tools. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Nathan, you, you had uh, your hand up there. Yeah. Um, one thing I think we often get in trouble in this discussion on is um, we're not building a shrink wrapped product. We're building a market, uh, a, a town square, if you will. It's a, it's a platform for collaboration and, you know, it's a really fair trade to have a little bit of product chaos if it means we have the best ideas competing and commingling within our community and within um, our discussions. So the principles I think I'm, I'm trying to get to here are, do they want to be part of that forum? Do they want to be part of that sharing of ideas? Um, and is it actually um, a project that has community behind it? We don't want to be a dumping ground for projects that companies weren't successful at. So they decided to just spin it off as open source or hope for some community collaboration. What we're after is we're after getting the folks who are thinking the deep, more, more deeply about problems and who are addressing the, the market that our community hopes to address in ways that are additive to that discussion and that help all of our uh, different technical efforts um, leverage one another. And it's okay if not everything works and it's okay if not everything integrates as long as it's adding to that collective whole. Um, but that's a fuzzy thing to measure. Um, it means that there will be some projects that overlap, but I think it gets back to Mick's point of what is the core mission? What's the, what is the commute town square about? What, what, are, what is it that we're all working on in terms of the idea sharing? Yeah, so let me throw out just a, a hypothetical that's a little bit smaller of a question and maybe we can iterate on that. So um, I don't want to talk about Gardner specifically, but it 
uh, it's an interesting um, it's an interesting component that we don't have right now, which is a project that's focused on being an oracle. Let's say we had three oracle projects be proposed at the same time. Would we pick just one of those? Would we pick all three of those? And why would we want to do one of that? I, I really think that is the core question for the TSC and how we shape the future. I, I, you know, convergence is a nice thing, but we have such an emotional investment and a business investment in the technologies we have that it seems unlikely that we're, you know, let's converge. Well, okay, which platform are we going to converge on? Um, I, I think the question you just asked, Dan, about, you know, it, are, are we about, this goes back to this sort of thousand flowers versus manicured garden. I think you and I were having this discussion a little bit about um, is it, is it about having three Oracle projects or is it about the TSC um, asserting the guidance through saying we've got one that covers this space and we're only gonna have one um, on it. And if somebody else comes in with a second project proposal that overlaps that one, um, what is our reaction to that? Is it um, may the best Oracle win um, or is it that we want to, to you know, encourage a con uh, communication or do we want to focus on community and say, okay, let's merge the communities and figure out how we get our one Oracle out of that. And then it becomes the TSC's responsibility. Our strategic um, imperative becomes how do we define that space and how do we ensure even if we need to solicit projects to fill in gaps that we find. Yeah, I, I mean, my perspective is that we can't just take a, like whoever's first, that becomes the, the sort of standard, right? Because if a, another project comes along and it's got uh, more developers or a bigger community, you know, it seems like it would be a, a poor decision to not include them because they're, they're not first. But I, so I think it's, I feel like we're, we're going to have to open, open it up to more people, right? But I guess the other question is how do we you know, what are the limited resources, right? So how do we, we can't obviously market for a hundred projects and we can't have a hundred updates in the TSC. So it seems like we need a way to both sort of be inclusive, but also limit, uh, you know, what gets exposure, what's get, what gets marketing, what gets attention at the TSC. And I don't know if there's a way to have that be a little bit more metric driven or, or some other thing that, you know, some way to sort of, um, sort out, you know, what gets more attention versus versus less, maybe. So I agree, uh, at least with the, the first part of, of what Kelly was saying there. I, I think it would be a really short-sighted decision for us to select one project and then have a, a similar project be proposed that might be demonstrably better, but then say no to it because we'd set some precedent that, that the first project in of, of a certain flavor was the only one that we would accept. Uh, and that would definitely be a change in direction from what we've done. Uh, at the same time, we have been talking about more components and more convergence all year. Uh, and it would be a shame to lose some of the benefits that we're just starting to see from that. So I wonder if there's a way that uh, we can be encouraging the projects to work together, recognizing that they're only going to do that when, when they see mutual advantage to it, uh, and at the same time facilitates new growth in the greenhouse so that we're, we're constantly taking in the, the best ideas, um, but also making sure that, that we do vet that those ideas are bringing some, some novelty that, that isn't uh, already represented. And I think the other thing we need to keep in mind throughout all of this um, is the quality of the projects. Um, our charter calls for enterprise DLTs and blockchain work not just, you know, and I think we need to make sure that by the time something gets to active status in version one, it is enterprise ready. Um, so, you know, I think it gets back to the project life cycle in that sense of, of where we place things when they come in. But we also don't, you know, we, we need to view everything as Hyperledger brand, not just a particular project brand. So if we bring, bring, bring in something that's not that high a quality or something, then it impacts, you know, 
the public perception of all of Hyperledger. So we just need to be clear on that. I think we discussed this before, right? Do we downgrade a project that actually was promising at the time? I don't know, maintainers left, priorities changed, you know, companies got acquired, whatever happened, right? And then after a year or two, yeah, it doesn't doesn't meet the standard anymore. I don't know if we can define what's active, what's not active. I think that's less of a thing. But yeah, Mark is right. Like it, it, we need to maintain the certain standard and quality to be enterprise grade. And we talked about it a few times, but I don't see, like sometimes we need to make some difficult decisions and to downgrade the status or something like that. And I don't see a lot of that. Well, so, we haven't started doing that, but we just uh, clarified our project life cycle transition. Mm -hmm. Includes, yeah. you know, moving things to deprecation and then eventually end of life. So I think we are set to do that. Sure, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, uh, totally. The other thing I, I wanted to say is, you know, I think we need to think about clarifying how the different pieces we have compare to one another. I mean, you know, what I hear a lot from people. I, I give a lot of presentation to meetups and that kind of stuff, right? And and people come to me and say, so I don't know which to use. I go to Hyperledger and there's tremendous amount of confusion. As you know, people go to the Hyperledger website. Most of the time, they don't know that Hyperledger is really just an organization and there is all these projects underneath. So they start from, oh, I'm going to start a project. I'm gonna, I want to learn how to use Hyperledger. And then... They, they fall onto this list of things and they're like, oh, what the hell is all of this? Where do I start? And, you know, eventually, one way or another, they find out there are different projects and there is things like Fabric and Sawtooth and Eroa that kind of fits at the same level. But then the question is, well, which one should I use? For what? We don't really have that documented clearly in any way, shape or form. And I think it does play into that you know the question of well how do they compare what are the different categories what are the different use cases that each of those things claim to address you know because we talk about have you know even if we didn't want to have two things you know of the same kind so to speak you know broadly speaking I, today we don't even have the categories we we you know we could rely on to start classifying all the different projects. So, Chris, in the past you you'd mentioned uh, say the the Apache model where there's just a list of projects. Um, do you have any? thoughts about if, if we did go down a, a more expansive route and we didn't really have to, uh, the, the question of, of is there a Hyperledger project or, or the perception rather that, that there's a single Hyperledger project, uh, do you think that that would be mitigated? Maybe you're busy on the, on the typing. Um, Sorry, I thought I was unmuted. Um, yeah, so I mean, you know, to a certain degree, the Apache model is enabled by virtue of the fact that Apache doesn't market anything. They, they, they're, they're marketing their process. They're marketing the Apache way. They're not marketing Cassandra versus Hadoop versus Spark versus whatever. And those things are roughly competing things. Right? There's, there is a certain amount of overlap. They're all sort of data analytics and so forth, but they're different approaches that some evolved out of another and sort of better ways of doing things. But nobody at, in the Apache leadership, nobody in the Apache community, other than the projects themselves, goes around necessarily trying to sort of make a case for why all those things are there. Their cases are, we have the Apache way, it is very useful in starting to help projects go through the incubation process, get accustomed to the Apache way, and once they've gotten that, they graduate and they get benefit from a very diverse community of contributors that are, you know, 100% behind open source, yada, yada, yada. Brian knows this very well. Um, but Apache itself doesn't market anything other than Apache. 
and for, for the sole purpose of saying we, we we're a place where you can come and you can do innovation and you can uh, you know you can <clears throat> join us in that in that endeavor but they're not marketing Hadoop versus Cassandra versus Spark versus you know and maybe that's what has to happen except that and and, and just let the projects do their own sort of marketing the way that it goes on in Apache I mean, at the end of the day, the, the challenge is Hyperledger trying to sort of make a case for itself. And so, yeah, if it wants to be just a place that has the Hyperledger way, you know, that's somehow rather distinct, then I think we're going to continue to have some problems because, you know, you're going to have, a, you know, anytime you bring in a project that's its own thing, fully formed, it's maybe even used in a, you know, production context being sold by a vendor or two. Um, there's all kinds of inertia behind that that's essentially working against any potential that we might want to pursue towards convergence because everybody's got deadlines to make and priorities that sort of trump the sort of doing the right thing, right? Because they're all, they're trying to make a buck, right? That's what they're about. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that, but that's, you know, the reality is I think you need to sort of factor in the reality and try and figure out how do we make an effective community around something where we're not necessarily trying to create a circumstance that's running at counter purposes to what people are trying to do anyway. Right. Yeah. And so one of the last comments I see flying across chat, there is uh, Kelly commenting on whether we're solving a, a marketing problem here. Um, and I think it'd be good to continue this conversation focusing more on the architectural coherence aspect of it. Um, so I don't want to consume the entirety of our, of our meeting today going through this, but um, some, some thoughts for next time or for continuing over the mail list are, you know, how can we have not just more tightly scoped projects like Oracle's, um, but you know the the silos that we already have, or the frameworks, I should say, that we already have. How do we how do we help them be less siloed and more uh, have have more coherence across the entire? I think you had a Freudian sloop there because that's sort of what we're you know struggling with, right? Yeah, and this is Leonard. I just wanted to say, you know, there are benefits in our drive to convergence and standardization. These are long term benefits. So by looking at someone brought up the idea of looking at gaps and major pain points around oracles and interoperability, for example, we can start at that level because that's where all the projects will benefit the drive to standardization and looking at these low hanging fruits because they, it's obvious that we look at interoperability and, and solve these pain points um, and drive towards more standardization. So yeah, it's a good thing long term. Thanks. Okay. Well, with that, let's, let's move along. I'm actually going to jump down in the agenda to make sure that we have enough time for uh, Quilt. Uh, Quilt has uh, gone through a, a sort of a, a different journey, I guess, in the last 12 months. And we haven't heard a lot from that project, but um, I've read through the report. I, I hope others have. It looks like we might be at, at a point where that, that direction is coming back around uh, to something uh, more active uh, and so it looks like not everybody has necessarily had a chance to read through the the quilt update but uh, I asked David to come here today and, and help present the project so David would you like to give the the committee an update on where things stand with uh, probably an emphasis on talking about what's changed in in the last several weeks for you yeah <clears throat> sure thing uh Happy to be here. Thanks for uh, inviting me. Uh, I'm David Fueling. I work at uh, Ripple, and I've been a longtime contributor on Quilt. Uh, I think I'm just coming up on about two years. And Quilt's kind of, um, I'd say, gone up and down in terms of um, my ability. And uh, Adrian Hope Bailey was another guy that uh, worked with me on Quilt over these past couple of years. Um, I think what's changed in the last few weeks is uh, Ripple is increasing its investment in Interledger more broadly. Um, and in particular, uh, that includes uh, allocating more resources to Interledger Java. 
And uh, I'd like to uh, do a lot of that work inside of um, the quilt project. Um, and so uh, I think uh, we, Adrian and I supported the reboot. Um, I, we're happy to do that. Uh, but our main focus, um, specifically my focus, uh, is around interledger. So I think, um, I suppose if I had to sort of speak broadly about what's changed, it sounds like the reboot is uh, not happening in terms of like broadening the scope of quilt. Um, and I think that is also fine with me. And if, if the, if the project's going to be more narrow, uh, which it is, then uh, I'm happy to kind of uh, take the leadership reins and maintain it and, and do reports and, and kind of everything required of a, of a healthy project. Um, so I think those two kind of things like sort of narrowing of, uh, or getting clarity on like sort of what's the scope of quilt, uh, has changed. And then also, um, we have some more resources to dedicate to quilt. So, um, all that sort of as context, um, I sort of, uh, I know Q3 isn't uh, finished yet, but I uh, kind of wanted to give the TSC uh, a, a view of sort of what we're planning for Q3. And, and happy to answer any specific questions or, or other contextual questions as well. Yeah, th thanks for putting the report together. That it's one of the things that we do to help keep the steering committee and the projects connected um, and, and also leads to more uh, inner project discussions. Uh, the 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 level of activity that we'd seen on quilts, of course, was was kind of dropping down. So it's it's nice to see that it's picking back up again. Um, I see that uh, Brian, uh, you wanted to jump in here. Sorry, I'm finding unmute as well. Um, yeah, just to, to reinforce what David said. I mean, at one point, uh, we had thought about making Quilt kind of an umbrella project for a couple of different um, uh, interoperability uh, projects that that seem to have some cohesion or some desire to kind of integrate between them. Uh, feedback from the TSC seemed to be against that kind of uh, umbrella or thematic kind of thing, um, which makes sense. So, I, I, you know, the Quilt reboot stuff don't don't look to that as as you know holding this up or complicating this. Um, really really glad to hear that Ripple looks at uh, is looking at investing more uh, into this and really hope that other projects look at finding a way to link in with Quilt. And I think having that scope clear uh, is important even you know, as we're talking about some of the marketing aspects of Hyperledger in, in the last discussion that we should probably be setting the right expectations for users and contributors that are, are coming to Quilt, that Quilt is one interoperability project that we have. Uh, it is focused on ILP. And uh, I think Chris had mentioned elsewhere that we don't want to overstate it as, as a panacea of something that, that provides more than it's actually intended to do. And I think that'll actually help it be more successful as as something that where people understand where they're coming and contributing and what the goals of that contribution are. If questions or comments from uh, anyone else on the steering committee? One, uh, this is Silas. Uh, one question about IOP. Are there any revisions to the protocol that are coming down the pipes? Is there stuff that you have to change coming up or is it basically a finalized protocol? Yeah, great question. Uh, the core protocol, um, wh what we call ILP v4, is very solid and no changes coming there. So uh, at the core, it's uh, pretty baked. Um, the higher level um, uh, ILPs loosely uh, mirrors kind of um, the internet stack. So there are higher level protocols built on top of ILP that are um, defined by the interledger community. And um, Many of those are also baked, but there are there are various ways. For example, um, currently the the payment the higher level payment protocol uh, relies on like um, shared secrets between senders and receivers as one example, and there are other ways to sort of secure a communications channel. So I expect um, it'll be less changes to the protocol, and maybe uh, if anything, new ways of of doing higher level protocols. If that makes sense. That does, yeah, thanks. 
Okay, great. And then um, you had had some some questions in there that uh, I'll let people respond to maybe over the um, comment mechanism in in the wiki. Uh, but it, one thing to point out is there's a community architects channel and, and mail list that you can also reach out to when you're not sure about different maintainer responsibilities. Um, and I would hope that all of the projects, uh, all of the maintainers of all the projects are subscribed to the technical steering committee mail list. Uh, like we discussed earlier in the meeting, that's or at least our main conduit for decisional things and, and other important announcements. Yeah, that was really helpful and, and thanks for all the feedback and email and on the wiki. I think I'm now subscribed to the right lists and kind of monitoring the right uh, wiki pages. So I feel pretty confident, but uh, also, I guess one plug, like um, it was helpful to sort of get a ping into the quilt mailing list uh, as a reminder, or sometimes they're just like you guys were discussing earlier pages I'm not subscribed to. So uh, I guess if anyone ever feels like um, something's missing from the maintainer side of quilt, uh, please ping me because it's probably just I've missed something. Yeah, it's it's hard to know what you're not subscribed to if you're not subscribed to it. Um, and then I'll just I'll point out again the what we kicked off the meeting with that there is a maintainer summit that we just hosted for Minneapolis in October. And if we could see you there, that'd be great. So Dan, if I may, I have one more question on the protocol side. I know that you know the. The group behind it had uh, challenges finding a home for the spec to actually standardize it. And uh, Adrian mentioned, you know, the different attempts that would be made over the years. And I just wonder if you ever found a home or is it still basically handled by a community group at W3C, I think is where it's happening. Yeah, um, so I guess there are, there are an, there are several areas of standardization. One it falls under the W3C, um, specifically like web monetization and web payments. So there's some standardization going on there. Um, but the core protocol and um, I would say everything that's not related to web payments and web monetization is happening uh, at intraledger.org. Um, so at this point we're kind of our own standards body. Um, and I think probably as the higher level protocols mature, we'll either you know, grow that organization or we'll look for another organization to kind of um, move these protocols into. But that's, uh, I guess, TBD at this point. Okay, thanks. Okay, great. Well, thanks again for uh, coming, David, and, and giving the update. All right, uh, jumping back in the, the agenda, um, we have the, you know what, uh, why don't we go ahead and, uh, is, is there somebody on from, from Cello to handle that update? Yeah, yeah, I'm Rook. Hi, everyone. One of the Cello maintainer, I'm going to do the QG report today. Can I start? Uh, no. Yeah, and and what we've been doing is we've been trying to just um, use this this time on the meeting to highlight issues or or big things that you want to point out and leave the bulk of the update for people to have read offline. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So 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 let's start from the project housing. Okay. <clears throat> Since community is aiming to make Trello to be more productive, production ready, uh, we are now cautions, cautious on the architecture and the features, not going to but not going to rush the final release out. Therefore, there are about 50 commits reacted to the master branch since the last quarter report. We also have a weekly meeting at Friday night of Beijing time. Often seen more than 10 participants since meeting, <clears throat> and since the meeting ran over the pre allocated 30 minutes many times, we have decided to prolong the meeting from 30 minutes to an hour. To an hour. And that's all for the Poyo Healthy and X for the 1.0 release. As I said before, we are. Per 
prudent, prudent on it and will not rush it out. So the overall activities in the PAX quarter that explore exploration company with manufactured addiction, we also decided and implemented a new dashboard. And right now the dashboard can create an agent and, and, the, and the agent is uh, some kind of a resource pool in the channel project. We can create an agent through the dashboard. We also have a talented intent, intent drawn it to the channel community. His name is Manak and from India. She's working with Tong. Tong is a mother uh, maintainer of the uh, channel project. She's, uh, Manak is working with Tong on the fabric operator, which can be used to deploy the fabric and Kubernetes in fact, and flexible. Uh, we also talk with the justicia proposal submitter to bring the proposal idea into Chero. We will have a demo from the sub submitter tomorrow night at the weekly meeting. And then we'll see how co cooperation happens between justicia and Chero. Um, and as for the current plans, there are works like unify all users interface panels, organize organize the manager factory network dynamically, and adapt the internal operation working group channel expansion methods, and seeking the cooperation with justicious. Some of works are already ongoing, and others are still under planning. So. And um, that's all of my updates. Anyone have any questions? Uh, so one comment uh, looking through this, uh, it's great that you're on track towards a major release. Uh, yeah. In the process of, you know, one of the one of the topics that we actually didn't get a chance to discuss today is uh, the criteria for first major release. Um, I think things that are clear, even if we haven't finalized them yet, though, are that we want to make sure that each project has completed the CII best practices. Uh, that's one of the quality and security uh, requirements that uh, will be important for establishing consistent quality across Hyperledger projects. Yeah, sure. So if you're not already familiar with that, uh, you can uh, feel free to ask questions on the TSC list or the community architects list uh, or channels in, in chat and we can point you to the relevant uh, requirements. Yeah, okay, I will do that. Any other questions? Okay, well, thanks for making time to, to join us at the meeting today and, and keeping us updated on Cello's progress. All right, Mark, do you think we have enough time to go through the PSWG update here? Looks like we've got about half of us having uh, had a chance to go through it. Sure, it's performance. I can talk really quick and we'll get right through it, no problem. <laughs> Great. Um, so it's been a slow quarter um, given travel and, and things and, and summer months a um, couple of the more in, personally I think the more interesting things we've done is we've brought in you know we had someone come talk to us about fast fabric work um, this past week we had someone come talk to us about accelerator that was one of the presentations in Tokyo um, so you know there's lots of work going on out there in the in the general community on improving performance of DLTs and uh, it's good to see you know some of it coming back through and, and getting it at least on our radar um, and how it works. The other main direction you know Vipin's written a great paper on Providence and uh, had some help from some of the supply chain folks. Um, I'm not sure if they were in the SIGs or in GRID but we're trying to work with both and uh, you know tap their expertise um, I'm not a supply chain expert, 
Um, you know, Fitbin, Fitbin has a lot more experience with it, but the more, you know, we can work across Hyperledger, the better. And so, you know, trying to come up with our, our next paper, which would define terms for supply chain um, in relationship to blockchain uh, and DLTs as far as transactions, things like that. You know, what does it mean for this? And then we can work with the Caliper people to get that in um, as a standard test. And hopefully, you know, that will go smoothly. And the final main thing we're looking at right now is um, Nick from IBM has done some work where, um, you know, he does tests on how, you know, looking for bottlenecks in fabric, basically, um, using Caliper. He's, a, he's one of the Caliper developers, too, I believe. He might be a maintainer. I'm not sure. But how we, you know, it, it goes through like CPU utilization, memory utilization, network utilization, things like that for different aspects. So it's not publishing, you know, here's the best TPS we can get out of Fabric, but it, it's more an analysis and Chris might be able to, you know, give more, more on that if we want it. But we're looking at how we can sort of start integrating confluence with maybe caliper output or something like that so things can get moved over easily um, it wouldn't be every time you ran it it got done but if there was a way to move things you know test results from caliper and some of this into the confluence um, you know i think one of the parts of the when we formed the group the charter was you know we want to be able to go through and say this is the performance you get from this uh, in this workload and that's why we're trying to define the standard workloads to, to level the playing field but it gives us a chance to make sure the definitions are there and you know put disclaimers on that your mileage will vary and um, you know this was a smaller than expected production environment or something like that um, so the goals you know to make sure we can um, have some governance, if you will, on how results are published through Hyperledger. Okay, great. Thanks. We've got about one minute left. Uh, does anybody have a burning question for Mark? Okay. Looks like you are off the hook, Mark. Thanks for getting that uh, update in there. Uh, we will look forward to meeting again next week where we will have a few uh, project proposals to disposition and, and discuss. So thanks for your time, everybody, and we'll talk again next week.